the most exciting part of a dynamic, although we had some amazing presentations. So Rob, Rob suggested that he wants to try to hurt us a little bit, I mean, get some, get some, let people react, but somehow move us towards some kind of uh, goal in the next uh, maybe 20, 25 minutes or so. And um, so I guess at this point I'll just leave it to him, but we probably need to give folks an opportunity to respond to this stuff, right? Please. Definitely. So there's, I, I love talking about this stuff, and so there's, like, what, what you were talking about stimulated a whole bunch of ideas for me that I would love to, that I would love to say, um, but I feel like we are here not just for, you know, our individual gratification, but our collective gratification, so I, I would love to, you know, hear other artists that you all think of, other festivals you thought of, any particular ideas or concepts if it's going slow, I'll just toss back in with the things that I was thinking about. But, um, you know, what are y'all? What are y'all thinking? What What are y'all? Anyone? Is there anyone who's particularly interested? Go I, have, I have a question that I constantly struggle with this when I, when I think in terms of hard versus soft advocacy. Um, and and I, you know, everyone always comes to us, and so even even Chris called me the hard edged river. Everyone always hard says, ass, you know, was he better <laughs> <laughs> hard advocacy, you know. Um, and, and I find that the, 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 the soft advocacy often uh, communicates a story, and, the, you know, a story communicates a point sometimes better than, than a, uh, a, a notice of intent to sue. And, you know, and so where it comes to art is this kind of breakdown between photojournalism and, uh, and, you know, maybe... maybe some more, some more interpretive work that that, um, that can that can kind of tell a story. And, uh, it, it wasn't. It wasn't. I've done some work with Krista, who you mentioned, um, and, and it wasn't Krista. It was another photojournalist, and there was a there was we were out together, and there was this thing that I really wanted her to capture a picture of, and um, you know, true to her photojournalistic ethic, she wouldn't move something just a little bit to get it into the frame so that, so that you know, the whole story could be captured in one picture. If she just moved this one thing, <laughs> went into the right, but she, you know, she wouldn't do it because she wanted to protect her photojournalistic ethic. And I just, you know, and all I wanted to do, you know, maybe that was moving too far into artistry and out of, out of photojournalism, but, um, you know, talk, talk about those two things and how they're both art, but... I, I don't know where the ethics of it sort of, sort of, you know, where that line is. We, we, uh, my initial response is that we, in initial conversations we were talking about, um, you know, sort of ricocheting between the concepts and the specifics. So ricocheting between, um, you know, well, will we commission works of art as part of this thing? And if we did commission works of art, um, what would they, how closely would we control them? Would we say that they had to be about a particular issue, they had to uh, occur in a particular location? And overarching, the thing of what the connection is between a festival like this and activism, we're sort of, I think we can assume that there's some connection between a festival like this and activism, but exactly what those connections will be, we don't know, and it's definitely open, and I know we hope that it will, that in the planning of this kind of thing, we'll continue to engage that question as like a touchstone of, you know, what it is that we're doing with this thing. Do you have any other? It's interesting. I think that deals a lot with Krista's identity, doesn't it? She sees herself as a photojournalist. I think if she responded as an artist, moving that object might not be such a big deal. But well, this, wasn't, this wasn't Krista. This was a classmate of Krista's. Uh -huh. it, it, yeah. you know, it, um, it, it's, you know, you mentioned her, made me think of this one moment. And it yeah. Was a, you know, it was a piece of yellow fishing line tangled up in some yeah. weeds that was right next to some yellow dandelions. You know, they were the same color, just trying to align it so that they could be in the same photo. But you're, you're right when it, you know, when it comes to the artist's identity and how they, how they think about themselves. So I think the photojournalist's adherence to facts would be very important in that case, and you'd need to respect it. But if you commissioned an artist to create images for you, then I think you'd have much more leeway. That's why we have artists, yeah. <laughs> Well, I'd love to know other people's ideas, because I love this festival idea, but I think there are also other... I actually think that part of Sustainable DC should be 
a niche for artists. I, I, there's going to be a whole bunch of money rolling out for sustainable DC, we think, for innovation projects, and I think artists should get a cut of that. And I think that it should include visual artists and musicians and poets and dancers um, and festival making. Uh, and I think artists, pro if anybody knows how to produce great value for very little money, <laughs> it's this community. So I can't imagine an investment that would be better spent than a several million dollars of sustainable DC being put toward art making. I, I don't know if I'm facilitating oh. or you are. Uh, anyway, I was just going to comment. Um, I come from the DC Environmental Film Festival, which is now celebrating our 21st year. And I just wanted to say, I understand what your backgrounds are, but I wanted to, to say about the power of film in educating people about their environment and in art. And in particular, in, in this particular festival, we have 10, uh, maybe 15 films that are related to art and the built environment um, and architecture. So I think, I think there, there would definitely be some interest on the part of the, of the Environmental Film Festival to participate um, if there were, for example, um, like we were approached by a large art um, group who was going to be having, um, a, you know, a, a show, and they wanted to know if they could show some of our some of the art films from the Environmental Film Festival in the background. Okay, you know, while the displays were going on, which I thought was which really kind of got my thinking started. Um, and also, in particular this year, we have a lot of, because you were, because you're from River Keepers and you were talking about that earlier, we have a lot of film shorts. So I think that would also give, that might also give some opportunity to sort of put this together. And also, the entire mission of the Environmental Film Festival really is to try and reach out beyond the converted, which I think is everybody's goal, and certainly one of the underlying goals for what we're talking about here. So, in whatever way we can make some kind of a contribution and how it sort of comes together, I hope we can kind of stay in touch about that. Yeah, no doubt. I, I think that we'll, I think that we will, I think there, even as we're considering a, a focused, you know, like week-long kind of festival, which, you know, might occur in the fall or something, um, you know, I know the Fringe Festival has been programming stuff now sort of year-round, mm -hmm. not like their full festival, but if there's some way that we can that we can bring film into this, I know that we'd be hey. like thrilled to do so. Okay, cool. I work with the craft community, people who are making furniture out of road signs, people who are making jewelry out of subway tokens, and on and on. And this can go from range from anywhere from oh, somebody who's never done anything and look what I've done on Sunday to people who spent their entire lives in you know, <coughs> classical techniques and apply them to this. And I'm hope that you would include some of this because it would also encourage people to look outside the box and take some of the trash that they think of as you can't use it again and find new life for old stuff. I think that you could have all kinds of programs helping people see outside the box, which mm -hmm. I would think is part of the That makes change me people's vision and the way they look at life. That makes me think of the Peeps Diorama competition, <laughs> which, like, the fact that the Washington Post has a Peeps Diorama competition engages a whole bunch of folks up, like, to do something that's fun and substantive. And if we were to run some kind of, like, competition around, you know, like, using found materials for art, like, I, it's just a, I think that would be a tremendous thing to do. But also have some of the work um, that is being done that is um, museum quality. That people An actual exhibit, too. Yeah, I mean, because it's the whole spectrum. Sure. Yeah. Please. Um, <clears throat> I just want to kind of plug in uh, what I like. Um, one of the disciplines, or I'm not sure what the elements of the kind of art I do is, it's called participatory art, or interactive art, which basically involves the audience into the art, whatever art, art, art we're making. There's a... Uh, there's a festival here that was uh, held here um, last year. It actually started in, in New York. It's called Figment, if, if you guys want to look it up. And Figment DC, first year. Huh? It's very cool. I've yeah. heard of this. Okay, okay, cool. And um, this year, they're actually doing it in uh, Anacostia Park. I'm not sure exactly where. It's a, it's a two-day festival. And it basically... Um, you know, brings the audience in, brings, you know, everybody participates in some form. It's either making the art itself or 
dart is designed to be interactive, and um, there's a level of um, transformation. You know, people who go through the art kind of, you know, they're not just observers, they kind of become, you know, entangled with, with the art. And, um, and so, the, so when we, especially about like causes like this, there's a, uh, there's a great sense of awareness that, that comes about. You know, they're like all of a sudden part of, part of the whole issue. So that's really powerful. Um, if, if you want to, you know, we can, we can, we can hook up with treatment artists. Also, separate from this, I'm sure most of you know, there's Automatic here in, in D.C. There's thousands of artists involved there, and we could, we could tap into that. I'm actually the um, director of outreach for, so um, I'm very thrilled to have an artist here as well. Yeah, so I mean, as as an example, um, last year um, I did I, I did a piece. Uh, it was basically a bunch of tree trunks that were tied together uh, from the storm, and I asked people to bring found objects. So whoever found out about this call brought a piece of something, you know, umbrella, chair. And at the end of the festival, which was a one-day, one-day, uh, one-day event, we had this massive art piece that was made by by everyone. And then I, then you know, because I do uh, work with live plants, I actually brought uh, weeds, and, and so, so I, I decorated the whole thing with, with weeds. It was it was called trash and weeds. And you know, people who would never done art, they they were like, wow, this is incredible. It was very very simple. Extremely simple, but it was just very powerful. <laughs> I know we had a couple, then we got one, two, three. Um, Jeff, just to take you back off of that, I'm here um, because we uh, we have projects like that. We also had a project last year that was um, I, I don't remember the name of the project, but it was I will read you stories while we clean up the Potomac. Um, <laughs> Figment DC, well, Figment as a whole, but Figment DC. Um, also is a leave no trace event, so the environment is kind of inherently part of our mission. Our focus is on accessibility, economic accessibility, public art, that kind of thing. Um, but I feel like it very much all ties together, and I came here today partly um, because I was interested in the kind of partnerships that could be formed. Um, the fact that we're moving to Anacostia this year, we're very interested in um, you know, the Anacostia River. We're going to be in the north field right alongside it. Um, we want to be making partnerships with artists and uh, administrators and activists who are working within that community because um, we'd love to see a lot of really participatory, interactive, you know, like really just rich experiences that come out of, um, of those partnerships. Right on. I think we're going to walk a line as, we're, as we are collectively figuring out what we do with this thing um, of designing participatory experiences that are, um, you know, facilitated by individuals or small groups and, and partners um, and things that are um, specifically designed to be opportunities for local professional artists, one of the, of whatever, of whatever kinds, um, that are one of the decisions that Chris and I were talking about early on is the Seeds Festival brought in people from around the country. And that's a wonderful thing. We want to use all local talent, all local folks. I mean, it doesn't have to be just living in D.C., but, you know, that would be the... Um, so it could be Maryland and Virginia? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And so that would be the... So the idea is that, you know, we, 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 we you know, figure yes. out how to, how to do this all together. And, and we'd love to talk more about, you know, how, to, how, how Figment can be productively a part of it. I think we are looking towards having some kind of a coordinating committee which will be not a walled off thing, but just like sort of a, you know, another chance for folks who are definitively working on producing this kind of thing to, to get together and talk. I think you, you started to respond to my concern. The, um, thinking about the outreach and multidiscipline artists uh, across the spectrum, how do you really tap into those different communities? There are already some artists, and I learned a lot today in terms of artists who are already doing this work. I know there are other people, other artists who will be interested in this work. They probably need this kind of a meeting to try to figure out what is already uh, taking place, what some of the artists are doing, so they can begin to have those conversations. And so I'm wondering about the, a website. Are you going to have a website that people can really tap into? Decent. Like, this is a... This is a 
Chris and I started talking about this as like a, you know, a, around Earth Day, like two, two or three years ago, and then I came back to him recently with it, you know, as a, can we, can we try and do something around this? So this is a, you know, I, I don't think we know exactly what URL Ground might zero. be generated. Ground zero. Although yeah. uh, we, we did put a LOI together, and we actually came up with a very totally. focused idea, but um, but now. Um, we actually were asked to submit a proposal, but then we hadn't had this converse, conversation, so it was too, we were really, really we were rushing the gun a little bit. Right. So it, it, so of course, a, a website would probably be part of it, and and also trying to. I think I have a list of people that signed up, and it was pretty evenly balanced between artists and and folks that would call themselves more environmental activists. And I think more of the artists showed up, and part of the. The, the goal of this is to bring, so one of the goals, the easy early goals is to bring more of the environmental community into this process. Mm -hmm. and I think that's the education piece that artists really need if they're really going to focus on some really good work and really go in deeply and not just kind of surface. Well, one thing, I mean, we need we want to identify a goal, look at the next year, and what's the focus goal? I mean, what what is there a specific issue we want to thematically wrap the uh, the festival around? We were talking about permaculture. We were talking about, I mean, there's we're you know there's a number of different kind of foci that we could bring to it, um, but I don't think we I don't think we know how to best do it. I know I was drawn to this conversation partly because of the festival, but also partly of the contribution artists can make in general. So I don't know how many of you are interested in sort of the festival idea, but then also doing commissions maybe in places throughout the city that could be an expression of the public art program. But I'm hoping that we can keep that conversation going even while we support the, the festival idea. No doubt. Because I think you, it can't just be one place, one time. Right. One thing that I think would be interesting um, as sort of one track of of this planning process would be to identify artists and environmental organizations who are willing to collaborate together mm -hmm. leading up to it and you know figure out what are what's the campaign that the organization is working on, what's the, the artist medium, and figuring out a way for them to um, create some sort of uh, artwork, performance, um, you know, display, something that will educate the public through the um, you know through the, the festival itself and be a, a vehicle for the organization to continue its work, as well as um, a vehicle for the artists to showcase their talent. You know, there are two festivals that come to mind when I hear this conversation. One is Earth Day, because I know that was kind of ongoing, and it's, I, don't know, I don't know how strong it was in the last few years. And then the Green, the September, uh, the Green Festival. And I don't know if there's a way to team up with those or start something else. I think we're. I think at this point, it's all like sort of open, open conversation. Uh, we're, I mean, as a, as a, as a working artist, you you don't get too far, um, you know, without thinking about how these kinds of things are going to work into a budget. And so, I, like, I think we're, we, I think we're we're right about our our time to conclude. But I don't want to not acknowledge that part of the conversations that we're having and trying to figure out, you know. Um, partnering organizations and what different things will go into this, how big a vision should we have versus how focused a vision, uh, definitely we're thinking about, you know, how to bring in the funding that we'll need to do whatever it is that we're trying to do. So that's, uh, so I encourage, I say that to say that I encourage y'all to think about that too, because, you know, as much as we're thinking about it, we don't have like, you know, answers there. We've got more, you know, trying to figure it out and stuff happening. So um, I'm really I'm really glad to be here and presenting with you and and glad to be here as part of the Descend community, which I which I already am. And um, you know, Chris, you wanna you wanna wrap us in a little bow? Um yeah, I mean uh, what I'd like to do, I mean is I just like one last, one last comment in terms of our broad throwing ideas on the wall. Again, I kind of mentioned it. There's a Supernatural Festival. The guy that started the Supernatural Festival, he mixed uh, three things together. Uh, beer, <laughs> um, the environment, and music. And, you know, I mean, that sounds like a typical beer festival, right? You see these all over Europe and, and other parts of the world. But, um, but, but he also, then, in the last few years, he started weaving in the arts community more, 
the not you know not just music but but other other forms of art. And all of a sudden, it the the, the, the thing had a solemn a solemn solemnness that was kind of um, that was very envious of that I don't feel at events that we have here in the U.S. One one of my my long term goals is to try to take this idea and 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 then maybe as an offshoot of that down the road. Of, a, of an environmental festival, we actually have our own localized Earth Day. There is no Earth Day for 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 DC, really. I mean, off sometimes a bunch of folks show up on the mall, mm -hmm. and it's a great thing and it's important. But um, but something more intimate for the community for DC, oh, and to really celebrate the the this new era of the age of the environment that we're we're right in the middle of now. Mm -hmm. And that, that we have to get this stuff right. We have to get our relationship with nature correct. So it, an environmental arts festival, you know, a couple of uh, small events that we can kind of coordinate. It may be sometime before the end of the year just to kind of get the ball rolling and then kind of and learn to work together with the broader constituencies, which I think is really important. The constituents we have, the environmental community by itself is not enough. We're not getting enough done. And so uh, part of what I'm trying to do is, is reach out to, to everyone and everybody. And, and uh, this, the art stuff seems to me is like a real opportunity, a real glue for, or a real uh, center for attracting all kinds of people into, into a broader sustainability movement that's beyond just what the environmental organizations or art, arts organizations are focused on. So that's kind of how... I'm looking at trying to get the, the network involved. My vision for b between now and the end of the year is to, you know, we had kind of outlined that maybe that the, at another meeting, a smaller meeting, or but anyway, everyone's welcome. We could start breaking it down a little bit. We could look at what um, uh, Robert's pr proposal was that we, we submitted to the Arts Commission, and they liked it. They liked the idea. Um, we just weren't ready to... <laughs> And then, and then, so, so we need to keep moving along and trying to get a core group of folks together. But, um, but anyway, so, so I guess maybe the next step will be that we'll, we'll have a little more um, structured discussion. Maybe continue, have some other discussions like this to keep bringing new people in, and then filter the most interested and active parties into, into the. Um, uh, a Robert and, um, and, and Stella led conversation about um, <laughs> about what what specifically how specifically do we want to design something as uh, as our calling card for starting starting a, a new era of I mean obviously I didn't realize there's all this stuff going on where the arts community is engaging on environmental issues I mean I had a, a few a sense of that but already I've learned a lot today about. There's all kinds of, of good things going on. I mean, I knew about the the movies and stuff, <laughs> but um, but anyway, that's that's all I have to add. Do you do you want to add to that? No. That's it. Great. Thanks. Any, anything else from you guys? Yes. Yeah. How much how much time could I could I ask could I get just uh, right now? Yeah, I feel something in me that's. Do you have two to two out. minutes? Does that work? Two minutes. Yeah. I, I'm willing. To, I got two minutes. Um, I'm just not sure what to say, but I, I feel it needs to come out, and it's. Just something that um, I'm feeling like I, I have something to offer, and I and this is really exciting. This this project is I want to be a part of it. <coughs> really, this is um, I, I have a s sense of what I've been exposed to in on the edge of the study of human development, um, technologies in um, that help us build a framework in. in doing our projects more successfully. And what I'm feeling is, from what we've been talking about, through the through a model of integral theory, looking at perhaps we're all just, we'll, we'll, get, we'll get maybe in a trap of building these solutions, which all are really you know, commendable. And we'll build a, um, a festival that's great, um, but maybe we'll not, as um, was, was mentioned earlier, get and touch the mainstream as much as we want. The, the converted will be there in large part, but not you know the uh, the people that we really need to communicate with. This is the challenge. That is always the challenge. And and what has um, what I've been exposed to and, and and want to well what I'm a part of what I consider myself a part of is 
the, the in integral revolution. I don't know if you know much about uh, the integral theory and uh, Ken Wilber's work, but I had the fortunate I've been fortunate to spend some time in Boulder, Colorado, where these, uh, where they're really pushing the edge on, on how to work together and, and build projects in a much more, you know, much more inclusive way, where the idea is that we are transcending and including where we are at and where everyone else is at, um, through through that um, uh, through that lens, the majority of the world is in this traditional worldview. And it's very hard for them to, to, to see this, this next meme that is coming in where organizations like this one and others are you know, uh, finger pointing, showing, showing what's going on in, in, the, uh, in the environment, saying, hey, this, is, this is what's happening, this is what we need to do, um, all sorts of great things are happening. Um, so there's a great leap for towards the arts, which is even a level beyond that. So to get from tradition, traditional meme to this, this, this level of mind, body, uh, melding to uh, our existence in the cosmos, which is all in us. You know, we, are the, we are the breathing in and out of, of all of life. That's a very big leap. So through this, through this, um, through this framework, we can take the, uh, what I see being discussed today is only really a we, like a we community um, type of solution and go towards the you and more towards the, the uh, these are terms in, in this uh, framework, the technology, the its, and then how it how it all comes together, so that we can touch we can touch many more people in a much more inclusive way, and it uh, uh, you 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 get bets much better results than you would have ever come up with just with what we what we've been talking about today. I want to be a part of it, and I don't know how, so that's just what I'm trying to <laughs> exhale. And I think we're not exactly sure exactly how to, to yeah. make this all come together, but yeah. but I will more from from other from everyone as well. Yeah. That's good. Thank you. Thank you. You know, it's interesting. You reminded me of Thank you. Yeah. one of the things we're trying to do with sustainability in the district is, and the, and everyone just misses it. We're missing it. We get caught up in our silos. And we're siloed on, on just trying to incrementally make uh, improvements on, on specific categories of environmental concerns that we have. And uh, one of the things, every t and we keep, keep getting distracted. For a while, I was starting to get the mayor and all his agencies, for instance, the, 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 the Office of Latino Affairs, to work with the District Department of the Environment. Mm. Seemed like a simple thing. They're both within the executive branch of government. No Why, you know, <laughs> let's get them to work together. We had a wonderful discussion here about that with the head of the Office of, of the Environment, uh, Latino Affairs and also the director of the District Department of the Environment. And, and within a week, just from having that conversation, they, they, all the smaller offices at, within the, the, the executive branch of government got together and had some meetings to talk about how can we bring sustainability, how can we be part of what the District Department of the Environment is working on in terms of sustainability and stuff. And so it was a little thing, but, but, but you know, it's the only ch chance we're going to have at success in all, any of this stuff is if we break down all these different silos and get to that larger um, and, 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 and I'm, you know, I'm floundering trying to figure out how but to do that. But you know, that's why artists are important, because yeah. culture goes across those silos. So I think if anybody can start kind of softening those walls, I think this particular group can. Yeah. And what I'm saying is you need a framework to make sure you're, you're more successful I than agree you were, much, you. much more successful than you yeah. were than just coming out with a, you know, this artsy, fartsy thing, and it's a festival, it's on the mall, whatever, you know, and it's just attended by uh, the converted. Yeah. It'd be nice to create some processes yeah. where it becomes yeah. more a part of everybody, just maybe right. a small part, but it but it keeps going and it's not it's not dependent on on our little the silos that will continue to exist for a while, the arts mm -hmm. the silo and the environmental silo. Yeah. One of one of the ways to do it, I'm not sure if I mean I don't know if this group has ever done it, it's mm -hmm. crowdfunding. And you know, when you when you talk mm -hmm. about fun funding five five dollars from five thousand people will will get all of them. No doubt. So we, um, I have to get back to work. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I look forward to continuing the conversation. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you.